I mean, there's only six minutes left. They're down by 10. Fourth and 19. This could essentially be ball game here if we can get a stop. We send heat. Penix delivers, and it's intercepted. And look who it is. It's Tremont Battle. Gets the pick, and he's out to the 45. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Panthers franchise. Today, we are going to be doing a little bit of simming once again. Yes, I know. But this season has been a very back-and-forth season, right? It's been... Good win, ugly win, ugly loss, weird loss, you know, like just this season is not going to be something that is that is going to be remembered in this franchise history, right? Maybe maybe aside from the fact that I think we have a few superstars on this team once we develop them a little bit, like Deion Boyd, you know, like Overton, you know, like some of these guys that I feel like are really going to step up at some point and really become stars in this league but as of right now man we are not there okay we we have been struggling against struggling teams and that is not a recipe for success in the postseason so what i'm going to do today is i think what i have decided is i am going to get us to i think at least in these two weeks saints cardinals and then we'll see where things are with the jets and if, you know, if we put a couple of wins together and we have a shot at the postseason still, I will, of course, watch those games and we'll we'll sort of see what happens from there. But if we end up losing these games, maybe we'll watch like one more like the Falcons and then we'll we'll go from there. Because um, if we fall down to like six and eight at this point, I don't know if we're going to be able to, to crawl our way back up. So that is where we're at today. And then here is a little bit of a recap from today's game, just so that way you guys are aware. Deion Boyd had a great day. He really did. 433 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Now, there were some plays where I wish we would have had things back. I wish we would have had a little bit better play out of him at some points. But overall, it wasn't too bad of a showing. Um, not a lot of running once again. I am still working on the playbook so that I can have a fresh book that actually runs the ball. And uh, But we had Deron Overton go absolutely off. 10 for 198 and two touchdowns. There was four receivers in this game, two from each team, that had over 100 yards. It was that kind of a performance. Another one to not sleep on is Justin Elias here. 6'3", 241, rookie out of Florida State, tight end for the Titans. 10 catches, 72 yards, and a touchdown. He was having a really, really good day as well. But our two guys, Overton and Peoples-Jones, really stepped up. It just could not be done because our defense could not stop anything. It was a rough day for the defenses for sure. Um, the Titans got after us very much so on defense with sacks, and it was it was not pretty. All right, so we are in week 14, and I think what I want to do here is especially get past week 15 as well, because that will show us, and once we get to week 16, will give us all of the players that we did the focus scouting on, and we'll be able, be able to see them you know, more unlocked. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the strategy so I get all that stuff taken care of. And then we're going to go ahead and do the simming. I think I'm just going to do all the stuff and then I will see you guys after all the simming is done. And we'll just pick up from there and see what happens in week 16. All right. So we made it to week 16 and we ended up taking both losses. Okay. Well, um, all right. Well, let's take a look and see what happened for these games. Uh, I knew that we lost the first game. I was because I was doing the training, but I did not know we lost the the Cardinals game as well. Holy crap! We got smoked by the Cardinals, 38 to 13. Let's go and take a look at these games. Okay, so we lost at a shootout to the Saints, 35 to 30. Deion Boyd, three touchdowns, two interceptions. He had a better day than that of Derek Carr. Um, rushing, Pierre Strong was the running back for the day. Four for 60, and Kirkland. Oh, we might have some injuries. Okay. It looks like Judge might have gotten hurt. Uh, receiving, A.T. Perry. Look at that. Eight for 114. Mingo, seven for 86. Overton, five for 66. Not a horrible day offensively. Defensively, let's see, do we have any sacks? We had one and a half from Clowney, a half a sack from Wallace, and that was it. And then the interceptions, both for the Saints were from Matthew and then Shaq Thompson. And Isaiah Simmons got one for us. And he fumbles. No, no fumbles. Okay. And then this one. Oof. 38 to 13. Kyler Murray had a really good day. Wow. Not many yards, but 84% completion, two touchdowns, no interceptions, no sacks either. 
Boyd had no interceptions as well. 202 yards, two touchdowns, three sacks, but a very rough 53% completion. Trey Benson going off for the Cardinals. Look at that. 21 for 121. Jerome Ford got a lot of the action. 9 for 46. And it looks like he was pretty much the sole rusher for us. Receiving-wise, Donovan Peoples-Jones going off. 7 for 105 and two touchdowns. Overton, 5 for 80. Marvin Harrison got himself a touchdown, even though it wasn't a great statistical day. And then defensively, let's see. Do we have any sacks this week? Well, no, we know we didn't. And we had no interceptions. Was there any fumbles? No, no fumbles. Okay, so really nothing. That is really crazy to lose by that big of a margin and not have any turnovers offensively. But you know what I mean? Like, it was just bad play all around. It wasn't even us shooting ourselves in the foot, at least turnover-wise. I thought I'd see like five sacks, two interceptions, a couple of fumbles, something to lead to that massacre. But no, it's just uh, not a good, not a good week at all. I, I feel like we're pretty much shot now for the playoffs. Let's take a look at the standings here. We're sitting at third place. Oof, we are two games behind the Falcons, three games behind the Bucks, one game ahead of the Saints we just lost to. And overall in the conference, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams right now with a better record than us. And another one, two, three, four with the same record. And then one, okay, so this this is a cluster right here. Wow, this is a lot. Um, well, let's, let's start with what we wanted to do. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the players that we put some points on so we can see what they are looking like here. We did Kenny Yates, one of the tight ends who ends up being a rounds two to three talent. So not as good as we were hoping. However, if he is a decent enough talent and he falls a little bit, we might be able to scoop him up later on in the draft. Skills wise, he has A in catching, pass block, spectacular catch. He has Bs in medium routes, catch in traffic, deep route. Stamina is a D. His injury is going to be a B or a C, so that is good. Awareness is going to be no worse than a B. Short route is not good at all. So he's definitely more of a vertical threat, but honestly, not a bad spread on his stuff. His physicals are actually pretty good too. Nothing too low. Great to good speed. Great to good change of direction, excel, agility. So really not that bad overall wise. And then we have Steven Briggs is the other one that we have unlocked. We don't have enough on Sammy Griffin yet. We should hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But Briggs is a round one talent. Day three. This is the big D tackle that had stood out. I wanted to see more of him. 355 pounds. He's got B's in awareness, block shedding, A's in impact block. That is good. Tackle and play rec. Power moves and finesse tied at C along with hit power. Stamina is a D. His, good, his injury is going to be good too. This guy has got to be high on the list. This is a this is could be a game changer on the defensive line for years. I mean, you get a 355 pound defensive tackle. I mean, that's that's a whole stuffer right there. That is wow. Okay, I I definitely want to keep him around on the board here for sure. We know anything else right now? Do we know anything about some of the defensive ends? No, we are 20% away. We will get that here shortly on who's who. Same with some of the safeties here, I'm assuming. We have 80% on a few guys already. So we are really close with quite a few of these guys. I'm really interested in guys like Smith and Dylan and also Cook and Ingram, these top guys here to see if this is something that we actually want to pursue in the first round. I'm trying to figure out if I want to look at any halfbacks or if I'm happy with the guys we have. Like part of me wants to just lean on Judge and Brooks into the future, but I'm just, I'm just not sure yet, you know? I guess it's not really much of a need, so I don't want to focus too much on it. I'd rather put more stock in potentially another tight end or two when we get to the end of the season for the private workouts. Because, I, I mean, yeah, Yates could fall to us and we could be in a good position to take him, but that's a lot of what ifs, you know? And while Ridley has remained healthy since his last stint, 
We haven't had a lot of interaction with him to really know if he's going to stay that way or not. And there are a few guys out here that I could be interested in. You know, we got Gabe Jones. We got Jeffrey Blythe. Um, Raheem Hairston going down to the day three guys. Even we got a 6'6 guy and Walter Hartley. Zach Bingham, 6'5". Another 6'5 here with Philip Gregory. So there are a lot of options here. It just comes down to can or any of these guys worth it. So we might have to stick some, some uh, private workouts in here a little bit. I think what we're going to do is between tight end and left tackle, right tackle, I got to find a tackle, man. We can't go into next year without Taylor Moten, who's not going to be coming back after this season. Just wants too much money, not interested in returning. We got to have somebody there. For all we know, we could end up getting somebody in free agency. Luckily for us, the private workouts come after the free agency session. So we'll have an idea of who we're able to get in free agency to fill some gaps before we get to having to make that decision. But if it does go that route, then I could still lean on something like maybe an edge rusher up here. Just because there's not a lot of defensive ends that we are going to be looking for. You know, a lot of the speed rushers seem to be up at the outside linebacker positions. I wish there would have been more for the draft so I could have stuck more like more time into these guys. But um, I also really want to learn more about some of these guys up here. Perry Barnett, Mike Cook. Um, who was the other one? Elijah Wheaton. Yeah, that was who. These guys have some really good statistics right now from what I've seen. And I want to see what they end up being after, you know, other things are, are unlocked. So it's going to be a tough decision depending on how free agency goes and how the rest of the season goes. I don't think we're going to be looking at corners at all. So safeties, linebackers, and linemen. So everything except corners on defense and on offense. It's really more about up front, tight ends and linemen, if anything. I don't think we need, obviously, a quarterback. I don't think we need a wide receiver. I also don't think we need a running back. I mean, for all I know, that could change. I don't know if somebody really pops off, but I don't think I'm going to get enough unlocked for these guys to really, like, jump off the page to me. I feel like this week would be a week, another good week to, to sim, and then we play the Falcons, maybe, and just see. if, Because if we win this week, it's not really going to mean much for our conference. But if we can... Sneak out a win against the Falcons somehow, close that gap a little bit. I mean, we we could technically have a shot. Boyd is having a good season. Like, let's look, let's look, let's look here, right? I mean, Boyd is having a really, really good rookie season for the most part. 3,600 yards, 27 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, 63% on his completions. He's taken 30 sacks, but overall, I think it's been a pretty good season. And even though he's been hurt for weeks now, it shows how much impact Jonathan Brooks was having when he's still our leading rusher this late in the season. And it's also showing how bad our offensive line and just our overall running ability is right now. So I definitely need to, to sort of reimagine what we're doing here. Um, I did see a comment, you know, about the coordinator stuff. And I like, listen, I 100% I agree to some point with you know, somebody mentioned, you know, you should only change playbooks if you do a coordinator. You should you shouldn't be changing playbooks, yada yada. I, I get that to a point. I've just done this game for so long. I know it's not gonna be as immersive and cool as as everybody thinks it's gonna be. I've done that approach before. And the problem with it is you're at the mercy of like four or five playbooks. And then you have to consider that those are also gonna be schemes that this team is not built for. And then on top of that, are those guys going to be worthwhile picking up? And are they going to have the stuff we want? And what if that playbook doesn't work? Am I supposed to just show you guys an entire year of horrible play? You know what I mean? Like, I understand that's the process of a franchise. I do. I, I, I'm not saying that's not like everything has to be win, win, win. But if the playbook is not working in CPU play, the games are hard to watch. They're frustrating to watch. Not just for me, but just for anybody watching them. So where do I draw the line there, right? Where do I where do I find the happy medium there? That's why I've been sort of going with an approach of maybe build a custom book that I can use. You know, maybe change up some stuff to fit our quarterback now because I want to give him a decent shot at being our guy going into the future. So it's just something that is difficult for me to try to balance properly just with the, the knowledge I have from the, the past and how things have worked. Um, but yeah, that's just something that popped up and I thought about after seeing a couple of comments about them. Um, as for the receiving, we are actually doing pretty good, much better than I thought. 
people's jones hasn't been the hasn't stolen the show as the number one but that's okay we have overton who i think even though his stats are low this a lot of this is from the last like six seven weeks because he was not in the lineup for the most most part like i would say one through six one through seven during the season so for the fact that he is already catching up to mingo and people's jones who have been up there for how long it tells a lot about where he's at um i like what mingo does he just seems to do a lot of it in the sim he doesn't just seem to do a lot of it in the games we watch whereas overton he can have some success in the sim but he goes off when he's on the field and uh donovan people's jones is just i think more mr consistent when we go to him on third downs he's there he makes the tough catches he he's just that guy that you rely on and, and boyd needs somebody like that defensively i've really liked some of the stuff i've seen from individual players shaq thompson of course he's been a tremendous tremendous player for us four interceptions two sacks nine tackles for loss jordan fuller at free safety has actually been a heck of a playmaker for us this year he really has. Trevin Wallace has really come onto the scene and shows the, a lot of good things. He's got six sacks on the year. Of course, Draymond Jones has been a real force. He's got 10 sacks for us. I want him back for the long haul at this point. I, I mean, obviously, he's a six-year pro. I know he's not going to be here all the time, but he has played very well. DJ Wanham has actually played pretty decently. Clowney has played good. The only problem is his age his contract demands and our current salary situation it just doesn't make a lot of sense for him to come back um so he will be gone but we have had some really good production from all of our edge rushers even though i feel like we need to still improve in that department um fumbles we haven't had a lot of fumbles we've had four <laughs> jones with one wanham thompson and Derek brown um Derek Brown has had a good season, even though it doesn't show statistically wise. He is the guy in the middle, you know, that just like he just makes things happen. So I'm happy with how he's played for us. Overall, it's been, I would say, a successful season to see what we have available to us heading into the future. I wouldn't say it's obviously been a successful season in terms of production on the field as a team. But you can see the sparks with some of these players. And I, I'm looking forward to obviously seeing these guys develop over the next couple of seasons and see who else we can add to the equation to just lift this team up to the next level. We're right there. We're, we're, we're knocking on the door at this point. The Panthers are not the laughing stock they were before this franchise, in my world anyway. I, I just feel like we should play the Falcons game. That's the way I'm feeling right now. I just think that's the, the best course of action. So I'm just going to go ahead and sim it. We're going to get to the week 17. We're going to play the Falcons. And that's sort of going to be like our last, like, okay, this is where the team is at heading into the offseason. If we somehow can sneak into the wild card, great. We'll, of course, watch that. But this might end up being the last episode of this particular season, including postseason. All right. So, yeah, I sim the Jets. We lost again. Um, we are not on a good path right now um let's see where we're at we're sitting well we're still in third place but now oh no we are in fourth now i was worried about that but i mean we weren't i don't think we we're gonna be able to catch the falcons they are still winning they haven't lost in the last couple of weeks even if we beat them this week we're still a game behind them at least and i'm not sure what well, with our division honestly i think we're probably even losing them into the tiebreaker um yeah this is gonna be a tough week but i think this was for the better i think our team is not exactly prepared for this season quite yet we have quite a bit of work to do still what i'm gonna do is we are going to take a look at player negotiations that we're gonna check out the falcons and then we're gonna take them on so now we're back here with some of these guys and i still feel like i want to re-sign rashawn stump I wish I could get Moten, but he's just, it's just too much. We have 26 million we got to work with, guys. You know what I mean? So I think we have to start making decisions here on guys we're going to be bringing back, guys we're not going to be bringing back. Ford was a good reason for a trade, but he really hasn't lived up to anything. Even in the, the, the little bit of time we did see him, he just never really, you know, he didn't do anything different than what Theo Judge was able to do, is what I'm trying to get at here. So we're going to withdraw offer from him. Um, we are going to... Withdraw from Dane Jackson here. We're going to withdraw from Jadavian Clowney. Um, we're going to stick with Watts for now. Pierre Strong is a candidate to come back. Nijman, 
I'm not paying him four mil a year. Well, now it just said that our cap room is much more. I'm so confused right now. Oh, that's because I think I had an offer out to somebody. Okay, well, that makes more sense. Um, Harryman, I doubt he'll be coming back. We'll see what, he, what his overall is. He doesn't have a lot of interest in re-signing, but it might be better at the end of the season. Same with Anthony Barr. If they don't drop to like 60 overalls, I would consider it. Same with Dalton. So I think I'm good here. I'm going to leave these guys for the end of the season. Um, I think the only one I really want to try and negotiate with still is Rashawn Sup. I just, man, why do you ask for so much money though? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I feel like we might just have to let him go. I, I don't think it's worth it. We have a lot of guys. We'll see. We'll see. So really not a lot to, to look at there as of yet. So I do have upgrade players to do yet and uh, weekly strategy. So let's take care of checking in on the Falcons and see where they're at. And here is the Falcons season. So her cousins apparently is hurt. Oh, so Michael Penix Jr. took over for the Falcons in week seven and has not looked back. Okay. So the Falcons moving on to Penix Jr. And since then, he's got 21 touchdowns, eight interceptions, 1,924 passing yards. Bijan Robinson, 865 with six touchdowns. Tyler Algier coming in at second place with touchdowns with four. Receiving wise, Darnell Mooney sort of having a career resurgence with Atlanta, 951, 10 touchdowns. Drake London with six, same with Rondale Moore, Kyle Pitts. Sort of an average tight end type of situation. Robinson, of course, uh, being involved in the passing game. And then on defense, they are led by Aurora Roro. Oh my gosh. Or, or horror horror. What? Or horror. Okay. I'm not going to try. I dude is playing good. Okay. Six sacks. Um, Ebiketti, Ebiketti, Oh, Atlanta's trying to mess me up, man. Doorless. Okay. Um, interceptions. AJ Terrell, of course, tied for leading with Jesse Bates. That makes sense. Both of them are the stalwarts of this defense. And they only have two fumbles. Daquan Boss. Ooh. Strong safety. They have another rookie as well. So I guess Michael Penix is now the starter. I'm not sure when that changed, but he's been running the show and it's been working. Offensive line wise, still have the same rough type of players. Good offensive line, like normal. Okorunko is here, but it looks like he might have been passed up by Dorless. Because, yeah, definitely. And then in the middle is Maurice Hurst. Um, on the linebackers, Abiketti, Michael Walker, and Braylon Trice. Okay, so not a very good front seven. But of course, we know they have a really good secondary. They have A.J. Terrell Jr. Their first rounder, Jimmy Hughes, is right behind Terrell Jr. They have Clark Phillips and Christian Fulton. And then Jesse Bates, of course, at free safety. And Daquan Boss, who I think was also a pretty high pick. I want to say maybe second round, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, second round pick. There we go. So that is the Falcons makeup. All right. So this week, um, I think I'm going to go back to medium pass, guys. I think that's what I'm going to do. They like to pass the ball, apparently. And then on defense, or on offense, I should say, um, I want to go throw it. Uh, no, I think we want to try to run the ball here. Yeah, let's go run the ball. And then for the game plan goals, we got uh, two passing touchdowns. That's not a bad one to have. Yep. Okay. They really think we're going to dominate, huh? Okay, well, I, we'll, we'll we'll take it. The CPU must know something that I don't. We're going to accept it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do the mini games. Then we're going to get to the player upgrades ahead of the game. All right. So, wow, we have a lot of updates. Deion Boyd with three. What? Did he win something? How the hell did he get so many upgrades? Well, he won player of the week, but I don't think that's enough to give him three upgrades. Wow. All right. Well, we're going to go field general. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch this. I really don't. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'm going to try Scrambler once to see if that helps break break up this three thing lead that Strongarm has. No. Nope. Oh, wait. Maybe it did. 
It did. Okay, we're gonna go scrambler again and see if it. Okay, that time it did go up. Shoot. Okay. All right, but we are. It's back to three. Son of a biscuit! I finally had one in there. Okay, well, this is where he's at now. That 98 throw power is gonna make him be a strong arm for like the majority of his career. I don't know how I'm gonna get that to not be the, the number one thing without making him a 99 in two, two things, you know what I mean? So we'll just keep working at it and see where it goes. I think that's what the big issue with him is during the game. So Trevin Wallace is getting two as well. We have a lot of upgrades. I did a lot of simming the last couple of weeks, but I, I mean, it was it was needed, you know? I think I think that we're another good season away before we can really start making some noise with this team. And I don't want to keep watching seasons that aren't going to go anywhere. I want to finish the story. Jesus Lord, I sound like what was it Cody Rhodes? The whole WWE thing, like how long ago? We're gonna go pass coverage to Wallace on both here. Okay, his his pass coverage is starting to come around 77 zone now that is big what is his man 75 oh we are golden okay so now i'm gonna lean heavily on uh runs run stopping for him tremont battle is also getting an upgrade and one thing i'm going to show you guys at the end of this se season here is i'm going to show you the overall that these players are that i did the focus players on so you can see how drastically they have changed battle hasn't changed all that often but he's gotten upgrades, but like not as frequent as some of the other guys. Um, we got to go man here. He needs some man. Okay, let's hope we can get a couple here. We get one and one to, to zone. Okay. Our left tackle is going to get one and we are going to do pass protector. This guy needs some assistance in that department. One pass block, one, two to pass finesse. That's that's actually a pretty solid upgrade. Overton is getting one as well. And I'm gonna make him a playmaker again because that is our scheme fit. Awareness, ball carry vision three, break tackle one, catching traffic one, catching one, deep route two, expect to catch two. He's still bugged out, but man, he is gonna be a special player. Jonathan Mingo is also getting an upgrade and we're gonna try to get him up to be a scheme fit as well. Okay, he gets some good stuff there. Oh, he's out for this week. He must have got hurt during practice. Jacquez Green also getting an upgrade. And I think we are working on his run stopping, if I'm not mistaken. His man does need a lot of work, though. Oh, he's got great injury in salmon. I just realized that. Yeah, we're going to go run stopper. Theo Judge. He gets one. He's out for five weeks. That's something that I was I forgot to mention is I did went went and looked at it after I saw that from the, the stats and he's out. We've got a lot of injuries this year, to be honest with you. I'm actually sort of liking it, especially when we get to the seasons where we're going to actually be watching these games from like, like a lot more games. I feel like it's going to be like really cool to be able to watch and see different players having to come in and play because injuries are more prevalent this year. So I'm really excited for that. Jatavian Sanders. And we're going to go possession here. Free catching traffic and a short route running. I like that. All right. And the rest of these guys, I'm just going to let them upgrade however they want to upgrade. There we go. Boom. So now it is time for the Falcons game. Let's go ahead and let's get into the action. Final division game is here. We are going to be getting our first look at Michael Penix Jr., as the quarterback for the Falcons. But we get to start first with our quarterback. Boyd comes out, hands it off immediately to Jerome Ford. And Ford's gonna get a nice rush of 13 right out of the gate. As I mentioned earlier, Ford just really hasn't, hasn't really done a whole lot for the team. Hasn't had a lot of opportunity. He hasn't had a lot of opportunity yet, but I just, haven't really seen much, so maybe this this game he'll have a chance to, considering the injuries to Theo Judge and, of course, Jonathan Brooks. As Leggett brings it in for another first down, we're off to a good start here. Two straight first downs. Yep, I had to say something. Ball start. Going to push us back another five, and it ends up being called on Kirkland. Well, that's not good. 
First and 15, Boyd takes a snap, another pass, he dumps it off to Kirkland, who's got some speed, and he is going to get a big chunk. Gets us 12 yards in total. Going to put us up really nice here on second and short. We're going to go empty set again. Boyd, quick pass underneath, incomplete. He was looking for Ridley. The contact breaks that pass up, and now it's third down. Ridley in motion. Another drop back for Boyd. And this time it is completed. It's Peoples-Jones on the catch. Little hitch route there gets the job done. We'll move the chains in to Atlanta territory. Now at the 40. We'll go back to Ford. And Ford will get four yards. 13 for 52 last week after the injuries with Judge. He's getting a little bit more playing time. I was just hoping he would pop off a little bit more, maybe show something that would make me want to keep him on as the running back here, but we just haven't seen that. Oh, there it is, a little pass to Kirkland on the screen. Juke move gets him free for a few more, and he'll get out at the 31, making it third and one. It was Trice over there who pushed him out. 8.09 and ticking. Boyd, quick snap. Throws it short to Ridley, makes the catch first down. And it was Daquan Boss, the rookie safety, coming over to make the tackle. And I don't know what you're doing there, man. Okay, we get it. Go back to the huddle. It was like four yards. A little much. Boyd under pressure. Gets out of there, and he's got some space. He'll get six. That's what I want to see out of him. Being decisive with his decisions when the pocket breaks down. Deciding when to get out early. Keeping us sort of ahead of the chains a little bit. And there goes Ridley. And I thought he was going to break free, but he does not. Tripped up at the last second. But regardless, it'll be first and goal from the eight. Good to see him back, man. I missed having him in the lineup. He's been so good this year. Probably one of our most underrated rookies of the draft. As Leggett catches a very short one over the middle. Short gain of one. I just want to see Ridley be great. Empty set again. We've been running a lot of empty set today. Boyd outside completed to Ridley again. But his momentum will carry him out at the two. Setting up another third down. Overton to the top of the screen. Boyd looking right side. He's got a completion and it's Peoples Jones for our first score. And on the opening drive, we go right down the field. Looking poised as ever with Deion Boyd leading the charge. And out comes Michael Penix Jr. First time he is going to be the starting quarterback against us anyway. He has had a pretty good season since he came in and took over the starting job. 1,900 yards passing. He's going to hand it off to Robinson who gets the edge somehow and he'll find his way for about 15. Dijon Robinson. And now who's injured? Oh, Bijan got hurt. That's a tough break for Atlanta. Luckily, they do have Tyler Algier, as you see him check in. He's been a reliable running back for them for years. Penix takes his first drop back, fires it to London underneath on a hitch route. He'll find him for nine. The Falcons got a lot of criticism for taking Penix Jr., and I was one of those critics. Um, I feel like Penix was one of the most court, like ready quarterbacks. Oh, a nice stop there in the backfield. Um, one of the most NFL-ready quarterbacks coming out of this past draft. Well, two years ago in my world, but I do think he has a future, though, if Atlanta lets him take the raids. And look at that. He takes off. As soon as he felt the pressure... He finds his way out to the 34. I think the whole Kirk Cousins and Penix situation is a little bit weird to have to deal with if you're Atlanta. As London just pushing the pile forward, refusing to go down, gets his team another first. Man. Falcons 
on a roll just like us. Another empty backfield. Penix drops back and throws it in the dirt. Going to be second down. Could be a pretty good battle, though, for the in the uh, NFC South here. If Penix keeps this job with Boyd, if he keeps his job, I'm assuming he will. Big stop there from Clowney. Pushing him back to the 31. When we get our first sack, awesome to see. Love to see that pass rush get through. I'm going to be curious to see how this pass rush looks next year, knowing that we're probably going to be doing a lot of shifting around. Now going for the screen. He's got it completed to Pitts. And Pitts just did not have enough room to get to that first, and now they're going to have to settle for three. All right, so the last couple of drives have resulted in punts for each team. As Penix rolls out, finds an open Kyle Pitts, turns it upfield, and he is out across the 40. Nice play from Penix so far. Looks like they found themselves their quarterback going into the future. Wonder if it'll be that way for the Falcons in real life. Kirk Cousins, of course, having a really good season right now for the Falcons. In real life, I should say. But the writing has to be on the wall at some point. That it's time to move on to the youngster. Penix hands off to Robinson, who is back from injury, weaving through traffic down to the 43. Nice play there. Gets him the first down. We are closing in on the two-minute warning here in the first half. Drop back for Penix. All day. Bombs it deep to the end zone, and it's batted down. It's Tremont Battle. He was one-on-one -on -one in the end zone, and he ends up forcing the incompletion. And that's why you get a guy who's 6'4". Penix going outside to London, and he is going to get shoved out by Jaquez Green. Third and five. Another big drop back. Penix releases deep right side, overshoots it. And that's going to lead to a field goal here for Atlanta. It's going to be a long one, though. 55-yard attempt. It's up. He's got the leg, and it is good. Atlanta gets their second field goal, and we'll make it a four-point game once again. Here we go, a handoff to open up the drive to Ford, and I like that he bounced it out, found five yards where it looked like it was going to be a gain of nothing. As you see, Boss coming up where once again, I feel like the Falcons may have found themselves a pretty, pretty good player in Daquan Boss. He has been in on a lot of plays today. Boyd underneath. Oh, man, that was almost bad. He was looking for Ridley on the short slants, but I think it was... Was that Davis Gaither that sort of almost jumped that route? Could be wrong. And that time he finds Ridley, and that'll go for a first. That was an injury there to the Atlanta Falcons. It was number 59. I just can't remember if that was uh, Davis Gaither. I think it was. Can't remember his number off the top of my head. Oh, blitz coming. Boyd sees it, fires it immediately, and guess who? It is Duran Overton finally getting involved down to the 41. We have been seeing him come on with a splash the last few episodes. And Boyd underneath again to Ridley. Making decisive decisions so far today. I'm loving the way he has been handling the passing game. Taking what the defense is giving him. Under a minute to go now in this half. Oh my God, what a hit. Yeah, could not hold on. Don't blame him there. Kirkland took a shot trying to make the catch. And now it's another third down. We have been pretty successful today on third downs. Boyd lets it go. Ridley with the catch again. You know, Ridley is one of those guys. He doesn't always pad the stat sheet. But what he does do is come through in the clutch in situations like that. Five yards needed. Give me that out route. I'll make the catch. Tough catch underneath, tough catch over the middle. 
even sideline catches he's always there that's why he's got six catches for about 40 yards so far today because he is just that reliable guy and Overton making plays as well as he takes his second catch down to the 13. And that will cause Carolina actually to call a timeout as they're trying to get this ball back. We're going to leave ourselves with one after that. Uh-oh, over the middle, and it's nothing there. So throw it away. Save the, save the timeout. We only have one. Boyd looking he's got a completion of people's Jones does he get out of bounds though is the question I think he did yes he did third and two we'll stop the clock we have like two or three shots at this end zone here Boyd gonna take off with it easy touchdown Dion Boyd doing it with his legs Nobody's happy in Atlanta, but we are, that's for sure. And we're going to make this a 17-6 game heading into the break. Boyd looking very poised today. All right, Atlanta's going to take over following the break. Down by 11 now, I think, to that late touchdown. I formation. Robinson, of course, in the backfield. We're going to go to him, left side. He's got a crease, and it closes quickly. Wallace and Thompson both come through. Bring him down after four. Luckily, because there was not many defenders behind that first line of defense. Another handoff to Robinson right up the gut. And he will take it for another four, making it third and two. Luckily for us, the Falcons haven't leaned too heavily on Robinson. The few times he's gotten the ball, he's actually produced quite well. So far this drive, though, they look like they want to try to get him more involved. Third and two, though, they're going to opt to throw it. Penix under pressure. He takes off, and he can run it, too. And he does just that first down. I'm sure you'd like to see him take a slide there instead of a hit. But he gets the job done. First down. Hits in motion here. Penix to throw it. Fires underneath to Moore that time he makes the catch down or out to the 45 oh a full house set here okay full house pistol don't see this all too often hand off to Robinson he cuts it back nice crease opens up and he finds himself 10 or like about 10 yards or so seven carries 50 yards on the ground for Robinson and Atlanta not too far behind in this game. If they really want to try to lean on the run, things are not that out of out of like play for them as Penix pushed away and somehow delivers a beautiful pass to B. John Robinson in the flats. That was an incredible throw and in play right there. Good catch as well from Robinson, who had a defender hanging all over him. Penix pushed out again, rolling out to his left, and he looks to run with it. He does. Sliding down this time, another first down for Atlanta. Excellent job by Penix today. Doing the same things that Boyd has been doing. Moving around the pocket, taking what the defense is giving him. And Robinson doing the same as he bounces it off to the right side for a gain of seven. This is the Falcons offense we saw earlier in the game. Moving with ease down the field. That time we shut it down, hopefully, or luckily. Third down, two to go. And they're going to opt to run it this time, and it does not work. We shut it down after no gain, and of course, Derek Brown getting back there, making his presence felt. And we're going to force a field goal here in Atlanta on this opening drive of the second half. No, we are not. They decided they want to get more points. They do not they do not want a field goal. Penix takes a snap, looks short and it's completed. He squeezed it into a very tight window to Moore. And he'll get the first down Atlanta needed. Getting a little aggressive here to start off this this uh, second half. Robinson gets outside, and he'll get five more. 
Defense re reeling right now. We need him to sort of settle down, make some plays, and hopefully still force a field goal. Robinson gets outside. Nobody there. And he's down to the one. They sealed the edge to perfection, and Robinson almost gets in the end zone. Luckily, we were able to stop him just shy, but now the Falcons have three or four opportunities if they really want to get one yard. Pitch play. Robinson shut down. Nice play in the backfield from Horn. Coming up from this corner position to make the open field tackle. We'll push him back a yard. Second and goal now. And here they have more like a three or four receiver set. Penix in a pass it under pressure. Fires it to London who makes the catch. Touchdown Atlanta. We sent a little heat up the middle and it left London get over to that middle spot. There wasn't much help for him there. Stevens trying to cover him all by himself, but London being a big receiver made that just, just difficult enough to make the play. And Atlanta will move back within four. No, no, okay, I'm wrong again. They want the two-point conversion. Quick snap for Penix. He's looking, pits wide open, easy two-point conversion, brings them back within three. As they run almost nine minutes off the third quarter clock, a 15-play, 72-yard drive. Deion Boyd, stats for the day, 18 to 24, 138, and a touchdown. He's also put on quite a show on the ground as well, including a touchdown there. But Atlanta getting aggressive, running down the whole third quarter, and now we're finding themselves within three. Quick pass underneath to Ridley. It's completed. Could we be seeing the start of a great rivalry here between Deion Boyd and our Panthers and Michael Penix and the Falcons? Obviously, there's already a good rivalry there, but nothing is better when you have two quarterbacks in their prime going at it twice a year. Short pass to Overton. Gets it to be third in inches. Only his third catch of the day. He's had a quiet one so far. Boyd fakes the handoff. Rolls out. Throws it back to that side to Ford. And he somehow makes the catch. Risky play, but it works. I formation. Boyd to throw it. Fires it very quickly into Ridley. And it goes only for two. Did not give him much time to really separate on that route. Play action again. And once again, he throws it back to Ford. That goes for three. We need a little bit more yardage than that, buddy. Third and five, Boyd takes a snap. Looks for Ridley, got him again. And without fail, finding his tight end for a gain of five, Boss. Man, he looks tough, too. He's got the dark visor. Okay. The Quan boss might have ourselves a stud here for the Falcons. I'm looking forward to seeing how his career plays out. But anyway, we got ourselves a pretty tightly contested game here. Looking at the score, you wouldn't think that it was an offensive game, but it has been that. But just a lot of it's been between the 20s. Not a lot of red zone plays and things that end up in touchdowns. A few field goals. You know and whatnot but overall very long drives as well today as Boyd takes a shot and he fires it into Leggett who drops it that is a play you need your wide receiver to make for you when you stand in that pocket waiting for him to get that opening take a big hit and there goes Kirkland up the middle first down Kirkland using his speed gets a big chunk there for us down to the 25 but as I was saying when your quarterback is taking hits like that, standing in the pocket to the very last minute, you need them to be able to rely on you to catch that ball. Yes, there was some traffic there, but it's nothing you haven't seen before. Luckily for us, Kirkland bails us out, gets us that first down that we were looking for anyway. And we'll go right back to him. And that time, though, Atlanta knew it was coming as A.J. Terrell coming up to make the stop. Eight tackles on the day for him. And that's going to be no gain. Second down. Another handoff to Kirkland, and he takes it for two. Not a lot there. Put ourselves in a tough spot on third and long.
Another handoff, and somehow Ford gets past the first defender and gets the first down. I'm still not a fan of that play calling. I'm just happy it worked in our favor. But there was a lot of ways that could have went wrong. First and 10. Boyd, under pressure, realizes it and just misses the pass to Leggett. It was a little bit low and behind him. I understand why he couldn't catch that one. But Boyd trying his best to make something happen here, even with pressure in his face. Quick snap and pass underneath, and it's Ridley again for five. Ten catches for 60 yards. Ridley, like I said, has been the epitome of reliable today. Every time we need four or five yards, Boyd has looked his way. And there goes Leggett making a catch, and he'll get it down to the one. First and goal for us now. Same situation that Atlanta was in on their last drive. We got three or four shots at this. And off four. Doesn't even need a second option. And we'll get in on the first play. Touchdown, Carolina. And we'll extend the lead back up to 10. Atlanta back on offense. Last drive out, they literally held the ball for the entire quarter. And oh my God, what a weird interaction there. It looked as if that might have been intercepted. And then the corner, for some reason, ran behind Pitts, leaving him somewhat of an opening, and he turns it into a gain of eight. Second and two for Atlanta. Robinson in the backfield. But yeah, Atlanta put together a, a huge drive, pretty much controlling the whole third quarter as Robinson refuses to go down. Gets himself to the 39, closing in on that century mark. 14 for 91. And now is a good time for them to, to really do that. The only problem is you only have 6.40 to go. So even though Robinson's been playing very well, you don't want to give the ball to him too many times and risk losing time on the clock. Fenix there ends up hitting the lineman or maybe our defensive lineman. Ball gets batted into the air. Six and a half to go. Underneath, incomplete. I'm not really sure what happened there, but Shaw Smith-Wade making a good play on the ball, third and 10. Quick snap, and he cannot get the throw off, and guess who it is? It's Draymond Jones, who's been a force in the middle for us this year. And that is going to be a big-time stop, and now Atlanta's essentially going to be forced to go for it. I mean, there's only six minutes left. They're down by 10. Fourth and 19. This could essentially be ball game here if we can get a stop. We send heat. Penix delivers and it's intercepted and look who it is it's Tremont Battle gets the pick and he's out to the 45 the rookie I believe his first interception of the season if not maybe his second but I'm having a hard time remember if he's had one already and that right there like I said could be the game as Atlanta was already running out of time and now with the ball in hand we could potentially run this thing down and get home already with a 10-point victory. Let's see how we want to approach this. I would assume we're going to run it, and Atlanta knows it. It's going to be which, which line can get the better push. Oh, no. We go play action, and Boyd fires a dot over the middle to Peoples-Jones. I was not expecting that. First and 10. Wow. I, I really expected a, a run there. I think Atlanta did, too. And maybe that's just to keep them on their toes a little bit here. And now we go to the ground. It's Kirkland up the middle. He'll only get two yards. Not a lot of room to run. 437 and ticking. Boyd again to throw it. What is happening? Leggett makes the catch and gets down. I mean, it's great if it works, but I mean, one wrong move and it could spell disaster. Boyd again to throw it. And yeah, that's that's why you don't keep throwing it. Run the clock down. What are we doing? Ridley in motion. Boyd again to throw. No, he's looking for the screen to Kirkland. He's got he's got room. And he's down in the 19. Boyd has had a lot of completions today, but he's not had a lot of yards. He's done a lot of checkdowns. 
but they've they've worked we had 10 third down conversions today Atlanta has only had two and there goes Kirkland he'll get the first down make it 11 on the day two and a half to go now first and ten we really don't need to do much of anything right now well I don't know why we're throwing it I mean just because we want to is that what's going on we're just trying to pad some stats here second and one that's going to bring us down to the two minute warning and I think Atlanta has pretty much just accepted their fate at this point they haven't really been calling timeouts unless like, maybe they're waiting for the two minute warning here but at this point one first down and what does we'll down it out and off Ford can't get it okay and now they're going to use their timeouts very strange I guess you know they figure that at this point we're going to run it now and that would be the best time to use them but hey we get the first down from Kirkland and that is going to end things essentially 154 to go first and goal we hand it off and Ford does not care it's a division game let's finish the season off with a bang gets a touchdown to make it a 31 14 game and that right there folks is 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 it i mean there's there's no coming back from that all right so now after that game let's take a look here and see what the stats end up being for boyd like i said man not a very high passing game when it comes to the yardage but he was very consistent and decisive with the ball 30 for 39 215 yards one touchdown I can't be too mad at that. Michael Penix Jr. started off pretty good, but in the second half, it seemed like our defense really started to figure some things out. And a lot of these incompletions also came from their last drive that you guys didn't see because it was just a bunch of incompletions that he really didn't have any control over. 12 of 23, 91 yards, a touchdown and an interception. I felt like the Falcons should have leaned on Bijan Robinson a little bit more because he was averaging a lot, 14 for 91. They just didn't really give him a lot of opportunities. Jerome Ford, however, Ended up having a very good day. 12 carries, 76 yards, two touchdowns, averaging over six yards a carry. Kirkland as well, averaging five on six for 30. Michael Penix, five for 50. And then Deion Boyd, five for 37. Receiving wise, Dalvin Ridley, like I have said multiple times throughout the day and over this, this season, has been a huge addition to this offense. 10 catches, 60 yards. He is the safety blanket for Deion Boyd, and it has shown to be that every single episode we see. And today was no different. He probably had over half of our third down conversions. So yes, his yardage wasn't very high. He didn't have any touchdowns, but his impact on the game was no less important. Donovan Peoples-Jones also having a pretty good day, six for 45 and a touchdown. We did not see a lot out of Deron Overton. A very quiet day for him since he's gotten into the starting lineup. Three for 40 yards. Still had that one really nice catch, but overall, not a lot of stuff to see from him. Defensively, A.J. Terrell was all over the field tackles-wise, but so was Daquan Boss. A very small safety, 5'9", 217, but he played well, especially in the run game, getting up there, making the tackles with the receivers. Makes me wonder if maybe I am overthinking the fact of having a shorter safety after seeing him play against us. You know, did he get any interceptions or any sacks? No, but 14 total tackles is a big deal. And that's that helps, right? And that's what you want out of your strong safety. Draymond Jones and Jadavian Clowney ended up getting a sack for us. Akeem Davis Gaither also getting a sack and then a half sack between Brown and Wanham. The interception, of course, coming from Tremon Battle, as you see him there in the background a little bit, as that's gonna be my thumbnail. And also with a pass deflection throughout the day, so he himself had a pretty good day as well. So overall, very good performance. I was happy to see this because we sort of finally put together some stuff that we haven't put together much throughout the season. And I think it was a good way to sort of end this, this second season to see what we are going to have going into the future. And that is going to bring us to the end of the game. And honestly, this is going to be the last video of this season because I just, like I said, guys, look, I understand. Well, we need to watch a few more games. Yeah, we could have, but for most of the season, we were struggling, okay? We were. Whether it was on the defensive side, offensive side, both, bad luck, and we need some more pieces. We're not there yet. We are making progress though. We are seven and nine. We are seeing a lot more out of the rookies that we do have, and I'm excited to see how things play out moving forward with them. 
let's go ahead and advance the week so we can see where things are at after the week. And now you can take a look at the standings. So we are the 11th seed in the NFC. We are bottom five, which is not good, <laughs> you know? But it also just sort of shows exactly what I anticipated. I don't see us as a, a team ready to make a playoff push. I don't see us as a team ready to make the playoffs, really. Now, is there opportunity for there to be some type of a, of a, uh, you know, a playoff berth at some point? Yes. I mean, not every team here has a, a tremendous record. But I would rather have a season where we almost get there. We see a lot of progress being made by our young individual players to allow us to know what we need to build up into the offseason and start next year really trying to make a push. We'll have a second-year quarterback. We'll have a second-year stud corner, um, tight end, wide receiver. We, we had a good draft class, a very, very good draft class, and I'm happy about that. So... Let's just get to this offseason. Let's really start to make this team our own. Make some adjustments to our coordinators. I think that was what sort of shot us in the foot down the line. And um, maybe if we can come up with a good game plan, we will be ready to go and take this team to the next level. So as for this video, that is all I have for you guys. Be on the lookout for the offseason. It's going to be coming in the next uh, in the next week depending on how long it takes me to record those things take forever man and let me tell you i sit like you guys might watch it for an hour and a half maybe an hour i'm recording that for like six hours because i am so tedious with everything i'll talk non-stop about all the free agents and i'll go on and on and on and i just cut it all out because when i'm in the editing room like in my editing process i'm like there's no way people are going to find this entertaining <laughs> so i just cut it all out and i show you who i end up going with but if you guys want more stuff of that in the off-season videos, I guess let me know down below and I will, you know, consider that when doing my next editing for the off-season. But thank you guys so much for watching. Before you leave, if you get that like button, subscribe if you have not already, turn on that bell notification. I will see you guys next time.